If you study survival history long enough, you notice a pattern. The simplest methods are often the most durable. Some were quietly set aside, not because they failed, but because they were too effective, too cheap, or didn't fit post-war industrial interests. Before we get into it, if Echoes of Survival is the kind of channel you value, take a moment to subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment. It helps keep this kind of research alive. Now, straight to the point. How soldiers in World War II purified water in the field. During World War II, millions of soldiers moved through environments where clean water simply didn't exist. Rivers were contaminated, wells were unreliable, and supply lines were often cut. One of the most widely issued solutions was calcium hypochlorite, commonly known then as bleaching powder, carried in small quantities and used to disinfect water on demand. This was not household bleach as we know it today, but a stabilized chlorine compound that could be stored dry, transported easily, and activated only when needed. The process was straightforward. A tiny measured amount of calcium hypochlorite was mixed with water to create a chlorine solution. That solution was then added to untreated water and left to stand. Within minutes, bacteria, viruses and many parasites were neutralized. The method required no electricity, no filters, no moving parts, and no specialized containers. It worked in the jungles of the Pacific, the deserts of North Africa, and the ruins of Europe. So, why did this method quietly disappear after the war? Well, after the war, municipal water systems expanded rapidly, and bottled chemical solutions started to replace those old dry compounds. Calcium hypochlorite did remain in industrial use, but you know, its role as a personal survival tool just faded from public awareness. It became much easier to sell tablets, filters, and a bit later, all sorts of complex purification devices. The old method honestly didn't require brand loyalty or replacement cartridges or any of those proprietary designs. Knowledge replaced dependency, and, well, that made it inconvenient. Yet militaries never truly abandoned it. Variations of this same chlorine-based purification remain in emergency response kits, disaster relief operations, and military field manuals to this day. How this method still applies in real-world survival situations. For modern survivalists, this method remains one of the most efficient water purification options available. A single pound of calcium hypochlorite can disinfect thousands of gallons of water if used correctly. In a long-term, grid-down scenario, it allows you to treat water from rivers, rain catchments or storage tanks without relying on fragile equipment. Now, practically speaking, this means you should store the compound dry in an airtight container, make sure you learn the correct dilution ratios, and of course, always allow the treated water enough contact time before you drink it. You know, it actually pairs quite well with basic cloth filtration to remove sediment first, just like soldiers used to do in the field. And let me tell you, this is not just theory. It's chemistry that's already proven itself under the harshest conditions imaginable. 
why this knowledge still matters today. Waterborne disease has, you know, historically killed more soldiers and civilians than combat itself. Understanding how earlier generations solved this problem without modern conveniences gives you resilience, not nostalgia. It gives you independence from supply chains and technology that, well, can fail. If you value this kind of historically grounded survival knowledge, subscribe to Echoes of Survival, share this video with others who care about real preparedness, and leave a comment with your thoughts or experiences. This is how we keep hard-earned knowledge from being forgotten again.